What's up guys? So, while we let the car warm up here, and I will be putting the AC on, hopefully you guys don't get any of the um, blower noise, but it is really hot outside. I don't want the wind to be going too crazy. Today's video is gonna be 100% dedicated to my 335i versus the M3 um, that I have now. So I had a 2011 335i, and now I have a 2011 M3. Both Alpine white, both manual, um, and both coupe. So, um, very similar spec. Um, and I and I actually did do a video on this a while back, which was extremely popular. It's definitely one of my most popular videos. But to be honest with you guys, I actually wanted to delete it um, just because I didn't really, I didn't focus as as well as I wanted to on the topics I talked about. So today is sort of going to be a fix to, oh, it did not shut my garage. There we go. Um, today is gonna be a video where I sort of talk a little bit more accurately on the differences here, and let's not rip off the splitters. That would be nice for the video. So, um, so let's, so let's jump right into it, guys. The very first and most significant thing that I honestly see a difference and hear a difference and experience a different thing about this car versus my 335i um, is the engine. It's, you know, the cars look similar, but they sound way different. They perform way different. And the, the whole driving, it sort of alters the whole driving experience and how you have to drive the car. So the fact that this car revs out to 8,400 RPM it makes it a whole different way that you need to drive it, especially compared to any car in general, especially a turbo car where you have tons of torque and you know a decent amount of power down low. You don't really need to worry about it. So the engine, um, the engine sound, which makes the exhaust sound a lot different and um, as well as the performance as well. I mean, it's um, 414 horsepower um, according to BMW, so uh, which is a lot. It has a lot of power, you know, that kind of goes along with the engine. It is more powerful than my 335, but um, it the torque is not there. You know, there's very little um, torque. You know, you're accelerating when you're at 2000 RPM and and no one's home for a little bit. You know, you're sort of like, what the hell? Which is why a lot of people do superchargers for that reason. But I don't really have any plans to do anything like that, at least in the near future. So the engine, that's how I feel. That's sort of my executive summary on the engine. Um, the S65 engine versus the N55 engine in my case, or even the N54. Either way, I mean, it's the same concept. The second, this is sort of in, this is in order. So the second most significant difference between the two cars is gonna be the suspension. The suspension rides way differently. The 335 I handled extremely well for a, like a normal car, very, very well. BMWs normally handle very well. But that car in particular um, does not handle like an M3 handles. It just doesn't. Um, and you can definitely tell that this thing is is ready. You know, it's ready, especially when you have it in um, your sport mode. It tightens things up. It feels a little bit harsh, more harsher. I have the EDC option, which is the electronic damper control. Even if you don't have that and you have the completely stock uh, base suspension, you don't have the button that you can change stuff, um, It you can definitely feel a difference. It is slightly um, more rough than the 335, but unless you're driving downtown through a lot of bad roads, it's so doable as a daily driver if you really wanted it to. So the suspension and the capability of it and the feel is 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 definitely way way different from you know from what I've experienced so far. I took the thing to the mountains, um, the tail of the dragon, and it. God, this this is probably one of the best cars you can take. Um, probably too much power for the mountains. You know, they say like Mini Coopers and stuff are one of the better cars because they're very nimble. And, um, excuse me, I'm driving. The car's not fully warmed up, so I can't give it the full. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's just so addicting. This sort of goes along the lines of everything else I've said. 
and that's the driving engagement. And what I'm trying to get at when I say driving engagement is I, I can't, I've had a hard time trying to explain what I mean by that. Ever since I got the car, I try to explain to people why I've been driving this car so much. I've put several thousand miles on it. I haven't, I haven't had it for very long. Um, part of the reason is because I've been on a few trips. Here we go. When you're next to a uh, any sort of uh, wall or any building, or if there's two buildings beside you, like in a downtown scene or something, ooh man, this the <laughs> above 3,000 really wakes people up. Um, but anyways, I'm so sorry, but it just, it's so weird. Like a lot of it's the steering, I think. Um, and when you put it in the sport mode, it ends up being a, not too heavy, but if you're, when I, I remember when I was in the mountains, um, my, my arms started to feel a little, you know, tired. And that's honestly just because I was doing it all day long. Um, you know, I was going around the mountains all day long. So, um, it's, it's so weird, like the driving engagement, you know, it makes me want to drive the car um, frequently and just even to work. The driving engagement is sort of like the recap on everything I've already sort of stated. Um, it's just, I wish I could explain, especially with the manual. I mean, I know that there's all those DCT guys out there, which, which really is good. Not even in the sport mode. <laughs> just makes me want to rip it. Um, the new ones just don't sound like this sounds. It's, uh, there's just no way around it. <clears throat> All right, so the last thing, which I don't, half of me likes it, half of me doesn't, and the other half, uh, I guess the other third, doesn't even, it doesn't even matter. I, I don't I don't really care. But um, the last thing, which um, is a good thing but a bad thing in my opinion. Uh, respect or the way people treat you or your car or like the car culture. So part of it is the car culture and the good part of it is when someone says, oh, you have an M3, um, it sort of brings like the M fam together. So if it's another BMW owner or especially an M owner, any M, they immediately relate to you because they sort of, most of the time went through a similar process of looking at some performance car, some sporty type car to find, and they found theirs and assuming that they love it, they're gonna wanna share that passion. So that whole um, passion for the car, the M fam, which <laughs> that's what I call it, the M fam, you know. I've met like so many of my friends just cause they drive a freaking M3 and they're like normal cool people, you know, they're car people, but like, I've made like a lot of good friends just because that was kind of the root of our interest, which is amazing. So that, the MFAM game, um, is really, really great. Um, you know, making relationships and friend friendships, uh, quite honestly, um, you know. So that's really the good part. That's really amazing about a car and not even a supercar like you know a normal performance car and this one's older now it doesn't even matter if you have an e30 or an e36 or any version people immediately relate even if they don't have the same um generation you know i've met a bunch of different guys that um it's like i said it's they immediately relate especially if there's not a lot of other like e92 m3 guys there i just you know can relate to the other guys course there's water and people are it sucks I hate driving through water with a clean car so this the negative aspect about having the m3 culturally or whatever you want to say and I maybe I'm blowing this out of proportion is that like sometimes people think that you're just a douche like all the time and I'm sort of someone who naturally sort of doesn't want attention and I know that sounds weird because like I just made my car louder and stuff <coughs> excuse me but um, that's true like I like the sound and I like to hear it so I'll get on it okay, let's go down to third so I like to get on it but then other people are like 
oh, what a douchebag, what a jerk, like BMW M3, blah, 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 thinks he's cool and wants to be loud, like, I don't want that, I don't want that, I want the opposite of that, um, I don't want to be noticed, which is why I kind of like this car specifically, because it's sort of like, not that noticeable from just driving on the road, but the sound is definitely noticeable, the pitch of the exhaust when I'm on it above three grand as I said a million times is something that oh my keys are rattling hopefully that wasn't in the video too bad but um, the the noise that it makes especially when I'm uh, you know screwing around a little bit is uh, amazing and intoxicating addicting all that and other people don't always have that same idea unless they're really car people you know it's that like I'm accelerating or something um, people kind of turn their heads and it really doesn't happen a lot and it doesn't really happen in general but like when I park somewhere when I go somewhere like the last thing I do is park at an angle like up front like or in a handicapped spot or anything like that like in general you should probably abide by that sort of way of thinking um, just because it's kind of respectful to other people around when it's far away like if I have a couple of friends like when I go to the gym I park with my friend Ignis a lot, and he has that Austin Yellow M4. And we park pretty much one of the furthest spots away in the corner um, at an angle. So we're taking up like two spots, but it's two cars. So it really only takes up three spots instead of two, um, which I don't really see as that big of a deal because there's no, never any cars back there. There's like a random work truck. So um, I don't know if you guys have seen it. I'm sure you've seen us park by now but I think that's gonna wrap up the video guys um, I think I did a much better job sort of explaining um, the biggest thing is the engine and the suspension uh, and sort of the driver um, it sort of just encapsulates you perfectly as a driver especially with the manual a manual car of anything automatically does in my opinion um, just because you're that much more engaged but um, I think this car does to a higher degree than um, a lot of other cars that claim to. That's what I really like is the the car claims to do um, claims to do certain things and it actually does them. Unlike other cars that claim and they just I don't think they pull it off. And I know that sounds like kind of a general statement, but um, yeah, that's my opinion. These are all my opinion. Um, keep in mind that like some people start to like rag on me like they're not the same car how can you compare but to be honest with you guys people cross shop those cars all the goddamn time i did well i did for a second when i was looking at my 335 but i couldn't afford an m3 at the time so i it doesn't it didn't matter but now if you have a extremely low mileage 335i versus maybe a little higher mileage m3 you might pay a little more for the m3 um, but you still cross shop it. Um, so, or maybe it, it, just a new one. Maybe is it worth saving that, you know, 20% or, you know, whatever the differential in price is, even if it's the new ones, this is, I'm kind of specifically talking about the E90 generation. Cause that's what I know best. And that's what I think I can relate to you guys, uh, most accurately. Um, I'm going around the circle here. I'm doing a lot of driving. So hopefully one last pull. <laughs> Didn't have sport mode on, so it kicked out traction a little bit. Um, well, it stopped. Uh, it kicked out the power. It stopped the power. So you have to put it in sport mode. But anyways, I think that's going to end this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. As I mentioned, please like the video. Subscribe if you like my content. It helps me do cool stuff. And by the way, if you are interested in those Lux lights, the Lux LEDs, um, I am able to get you a pair if you're interested. I will do more videos on those. Um, as soon as I put up one video on them, like a follow-up video even, um, a ton of people message me instantly. It's like they didn't see the first video. So let me know if you're interested. I can work with you. I don't have a full Shopify account up yet, um, but I'm working to do that. that cost money to do it per month and I'm sort of trying to balance things with making this a little company here.
here and getting things organized. So for now, I'm doing PayPal, um, and I've already actually been able to drop ship a bunch of a bunch of them already. The the one eighty is the exact ones that I had. So um, thanks again so much for watching, guys. Leave a comment below if I've got anything, and I will see you guys next time.